Hello everybody to this very quick video tutorial here on my channel Floey's Corner. It's about the part workbench, a very nice and strong workbench to build 3D geometry and about sketching within the part workbench. So we start a new document and switch to the part workbench. As you might know, part workbench is often used to create geometry with primitives, for example, and fuse them or um, subtract them from each other. For example, you use a cube and a cylinder and you can take these two and merge them or you could um, not merge them, but say cube minus cylinder. So you subtract the cylinder from the cube and all these nice things. But something you should keep in mind that the part workbench is a lot more powerful than that. The part workbench indeed can also work with sketches for extrusions or sweep commands or uh, a lot more. So you often have to switch to the sketcher, create a new sketch here on this little icon, for example, on the XY plane, make a nice shape, let's start just for demonstration purpose here with a simple L shape. Finish the sketch. So then you have to switch back to the part and within the part workbench you can take this sketch, maybe go for right click, rename it. Let's call it L shape for example. And then you can do anything you would like to do with that sketch go for extrude and you can taper an angle here for example let's say five degrees and then you have a tapered angle and as you see the L shape is getting bigger after the extrusion so that's a nice thing that does not work in the part design workbench so it could be a nice uh, uh, thing a nice feature in the part workbench to do instead of the part uh, design workbench. So, but what's the purpose of the video? I showed you that you always have to switch back and forth between sketcher and part and sketcher and part and that's a little bit exhausting because in the part design workbench, as you might know, you have a pretty handy symbol here, the create a new sketch symbol, so you have the impression that the sketcher is included in the part design workbench. But we can uh, do this uh, manually if we'd like to. We just have to, um, let's go to the sketcher workbench. And in the sketcher workbench, we go to um, tools, customize. We go to toolbars and within the toolbars, we select sketcher here in the left menu we select part in the right menu and let's make a new um, toolbar. I will call it part sketching, but it's up to you to choose a name that's appropriate for you. You select this toolbar and then you search for the uh, make a new sketch command that's somewhere hidden here, um, create a sketch. So then you edit with this um, arrow moving to the right direction. You just edit it into the new toolbar part sketching and then you can go to close. And when you switch to part the next time, you will see you have a new toolbar here that contains the create a new sketch symbol. That's very cool because now you don't have to switch back and forth here in the workbench selector. You just click your icon here maybe also on the XY plane. Let's stay at this point, create a single um, cylinder like that, for example, make it diameter of 15. Go to close, we can extrude it, select the sketch, go to extrude, maybe eight millimeters. And then we select the first extrude and the second extrude and just say subtract and then we created a nice shape. So that's just an example how you can add custom symbols from other workbenches 
in your workflow. Another thing that's very common is that you are missing the pattern features here in the um, part workbench. In the part design workbench, you have included pattern features. You can get these pattern features from the draft workbench. So let's go to draft, customize, toolbars, and from the draft workbench, it's somewhere here, to the part workbench. Let's take, for example, the uh, array feature, make a new toolbar, call it part patterns, and we add the array pattern into this one here, and maybe also the mirror feature, and also I'm looking for the polar pattern, um, polar array, here it is, and close. So we switch back to part, and there we have the pattern features now also in the part workbench. We can select the cut that we just made, select the array, and I'm not going to change much of the features here because it's too uh, complicated now for this uh, purpose of just demonstrating it. You can give intervals in X, Y, Z direction, but just leave it like that, go to OK. And as you see, I have just made a nice rectangular pattern of two by two features within the part workbench. So that's how you customize your part toolbar. Yeah, thanks for watching the video and goodbye from Flowey.